In this video, we will be showing you everything that should be done in order to carry out an inspection of your inboard engine before and after winter storage. Follow our hints and tips to start the season in the best possible way and make sure your engine lasts a long, long time. Start by taking a good first look at the engine to get a general overview of its condition. This includes examining the most important components. Check for leaks around the engine and bilge, the condition of the drive belt and whether any rust has formed. You should also inspect the electrical system and check whether the clutch and motor feet are cracked or show signs of porosity. Last but not least, check the battery terminals to ensure that there is no corrosion. An additive optimizes engine performance, prevents the formation of bacteria and keeps the fuel system clean. After opening the fuel filler cap, the additive can be added, making sure to follow the correct dosage. In our case, we are using Diesel Protect Shooter from Liqui Moly. We recommend starting by replenishing the additive so that it can get into the system during the test run. The test run is carried out in order to be able to detect any further leaks or problems. Before starting the test run, make sure that the seacock is opened and the main switch is on. Warming the engine heats up the oil and makes it easier to drain at a later point. Make sure that the engine does not get too hot to avoid injuries and burns. At this point, various engine components should also be inspected. Check for water in the seawater filter. Make sure there are no leaks in the injectors, the pump or filter. Is the drive belt and cooling system in a good condition? The latter can be checked by putting your hand on the impeller cover. If the cover is cold, the cooling system is working okay. The motor and main switch can then be switched off. The pre-filter prevents coarse dirt from getting into the system. Use the sight glass to check whether sludge or bacteria have formed. In addition, water that has accumulated during the season can be removed by opening the drain cock. Dismantling requires simply loosening the fastening screws. Make sure to use new seals when reassembling the unit. The fine filter is used to prevent very small particles from entering the system and is usually located on the engine. It can be easily removed using a filter wrench. Oil absorbent pads should also be placed under the filter as fuel can leak out. In our example, it is easy to see why an additive plays such a crucial role. Diesel pest can cause fuel lines to become clogged and engine damage to occur. Before fitting the new filter, clean the sealing surface on the engine and dab the O-ring of the new filter with oil. This will help to loosen the filter more easily for future work. It also prevents the sealing ring from slipping. The filter can then be tightened by hand. Finally, the area should be cleaned to avoid mistaking any residues as leaks during the test run. The pre-filter and fine filter must also be bled to remove the air in the fuel system caused by the filter change. To do this, turn the bleed screw two or three times to loosen it. The fuel feed pump can then be operated until fuel emerges from the opening without any bubbles. The gasket should ideally also be replaced here. Finally, tighten the screw and clean the area. The engine oil and oil filter should be changed once a year before winter storage to avoid deposits forming. Remove the dipstick and use an oil change pump extractor to remove the old oil. Feed the tube into the oil sump through the dipstick opening. Start pumping to create a vacuum. Oil should flow into the container by itself and only stop when the oil sump is empty. 
We recommend a filter wrench for changing the oil filter as this allows the filter to be loosened quickly and without much effort. After the filter has been removed, clean the sealing surface and dab the o-ring of the new filter with oil. The filter can then be hand tightened. Add fresh engine oil through the filler neck with a funnel. Use the amount of oil removed in the suction pump as an approximate indication as to how much oil needs to be added, but always double check using the dipstick. It should be between minimum and maximum. Gear oil should also be changed once a year at the same time as the engine oil is changed. The old gearbox oil can be removed with an oil suction pump. To do this, insert the tube into the oil sump through the dipstick opening. Start pumping and after a few strokes the pump generates a vacuum that automatically extracts the oil into the container. Add new gear oil using a funnel. As before, use the amount of oil removed as an approximate indication as to how much oil needs to be added. But you should still check the dipstick, it should be between minimum and maximum. Before the start of the cold season, antifreeze should be checked and if necessary, replaced. However, this only applies to engines with dual circuit cooling. Take off the cap and remove a small amount of liquid to test with an antifreeze tester. Use the scale to read off the temperature to which, below freezing, the system is protected. The drive belt is one of the most important parts of the engine. Consequently, it is essential to check it for damage and the correct tension. To be able to change a drive belt, the alternator fixing and pivot screw must first be loosened. You can then easily remove the belt and replace it with a new one if necessary. After changing the belt, check the tension. If it is too loose, it can slip off when the engine is running. Too tight and it will wear quickly. You can check the tension easily with your finger. Press down on the longest part of the belt and if you can only push down a few centimeters, the tension is okay. The impeller is used to cool the engine and must therefore be intact. Before changing the impeller, first close the seacock. Then loosen the cover and remove the impeller including the gasket. It is important to compare the new impeller with the old one before fitting it. If everything matches up, lubricate with the supplied grease before fitting. The same applies to new seals. Before replacing the cover, Run your finger over it to feel for any grooves. If there are marks, the cover must be replaced. If not, refit the old cover. To clean the seawater filter, simply open the cover, remove the strainer and remove any foreign particles. After the filter has been cleaned of dirt, the sieve can be inserted and the cover tightened. Once you have completed your inspection, carry out another test run to check all the components you have worked on. Make sure you open the seacock before starting the engine. Check that the drive belt is in the correct position, the engine is free of leaks and that the cooling system is functioning correctly. It's a good idea to check the oil level again after the engine has been used for a short while. Before winter storage, the outside circuit should also be flushed with antifreeze. The seacock must be closed for this purpose. You can then tip the antifreeze into the seawater filter while the engine is running until it comes out of the exhaust. To reliably protect your engine from corrosion and flash rust, an interior preservative should be used before switching off the engine so that it can settle in the combustion chambers.